Managing business for quite a long time. I've been working with the health department and with WHO on measles vaccine and uh, polio vaccines and so on. So it is one of my areas of interest. And um, recently I sent something around to our students because there's a lot of uncertainty, there's a lot of misinformation. And I would make a plea that people do not get their information from Facebook. Facebook is not a source of accurate information. It is a source of people's opinions. And what I'm going to tell you now is fact. And these are facts which are verified uh, from all the world over in the top medical literature through WHO, through UNICEF, through a whole many uh, organizations. So one of, the, one of the questions and the answers was, is the vaccine compulsory? And the answer is no. It's not. We, we, we can't make anybody take the vaccine that doesn't want to. Is the vaccine a good thing to do? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Why is it a good thing to do? Because it's going to protect you. It doesn't protect you 100%. There's no perfect vaccine that protects anybody 100%. But with this vaccine that we've got, the evidence is that it protects you about 70%. And more important than that, the evidence is that it protects death and serious disease. What is this evidence based on? The evidence is based on more than 400 million people who have received vaccine against COVID in the world. More than 400 million. And if we focus on the vaccine that we've been given, uh, and we are going to be given over the, over the, over the next year or two, uh, the vaccine is called the AstraZeneca vaccine, initially designed by Oxford University. More than 40 million more than 40 million people have taken that vaccine and it's been approved by many countries uh, including Australia uh, including the UK it's, it's the main vaccine that's been given now in the UK why, why is this vaccine a good one for Papua New Guinea? because it's, it's A. it's safe and I'll talk about that in a minute B. it's easily stored we can store it in our northern, on our ordinary uh, fridges that we have for, for storing our own, our own vaccines, our, our polio vaccines, our measles vaccine, and so on. It's the same conditions of storage. It lasts for quite a long time under those, under those circumstances. The other vaccines that you've heard about in the news, the Pfizer vaccine, they're not appropriate for PNG because they have to be stored at minus 70 degrees centigrade which is simply not feasible. So we've got the best, the best possible vaccine that's available now. Okay? So the next question, is it safe? Out of those 40 million people, how many have had a serious, a serious side effect? And the answer is no more than the background population. If you take a million people and you look at how many of them have venous thrombosis, of course some people will have venous thrombosis. If you look at the people in the elderly age group, uh, they're going to have venous thrombosis. Ladies are more likely to have venous thrombosis than gentlemen are. All of the data from the very, very, very careful monitoring of this vaccine has shown that, that the, the incidence of those severe side effects is no greater than the background population. There are some very, very, very rare conditions which might be which might be accentuated by the vaccine but there is no clear evidence on that it is one of the safest vaccines that you have and I said the other day at another press conference how many of you take amoxicillin how many of you take amoxicillin so every time you take, you take amoxicillin you're taking a risk you might have an anaphylactic reaction you might die as a result of taking the amoxicillin but you're jolly glad of your moxicillin because it will, it will deal with your pneumonia or, or your sores or whatever it is you're taking it for. So, so this is very important to get the message across. This vaccine is a safe vaccine. The next question is, are there side effects from the vaccine? And there is, the answer is yes, there are. Some people will have a bit of a sore arm for a few hours. Some people might get a bit of a headache. Uh, but most of those are very short-lived side effects. And we get side effects 
um, you know, whenever we take any medicine, you, know, you take aspirin, you might get a bit of tummy upset or something like that. Um, so, so, so there will be side effects. Some people will get some mild side effects, which may last for one or two days and then disappear. But I'll come back to one of the things that Prof. Kevo Susie mentioned. This disease is transmissible. It's not a question of me getting the disease uh, and, and then I, I deal with it and I'm okay. I get the disease, I go home, I'm with my family, uh, I'm spreading the germs to my family, uh, and they get infected. So this is a very, very important message. We're not just protecting ourselves, we're protecting our communities, we're protecting our families. And as Prof. Kevo says, if you've got elderly people in your house, and you've got people with diabetes, or raised blood pressure, or have got coronary artery disease, or they've got kidney disease, and you go home with your COVID, and you may not even be feeling very unwell at all. You may be feeling okay, but you're still transmitting it. You're still infectious, and then you're going to pass it to your dear old grandma, and she's gone. You have to think about that. Health workers have to think about that. They really have to think about that. We're not just about individuals, we're about families, and we're about communities. The other thing which Prof has said, you know, we're, we're, of, course we're, of course we're concerned when people die. And, and you know, somebody said the other day, oh, our death rate's only 1%. Only 1%? But it might be your grandma, it might be your mother, it might be your father. 1% is a high mortality rate for this, for this illness. And not only, not only that, but for many people who feel not, not particularly unwell with this disease, they may have what's called a post-viral syndrome, where they might have aches and pains, and they may be desperately tired, uh, desperately tired, uh, for <laughs> several months, several months after two the years. infection. Or um, in some cases, as long as two years. It's called the post-COVID syndrome. It's very well recognized, and it occurs in up to 14% of people who've had COVID. So, so this is not, this is not sick nothing, huh? This is a big brother sick there. Uh, and we can protect ourselves. We can protect our families in a number of ways. Number one, masks. If I'm talking to you and you're wearing a mask and you're talking to me and I'm wearing a mask and I've got COVID, the chances of me passing it to you are very small if we're both wearing masks. If you're not wearing a mask and I'm not wearing a mask, the chances of you getting COVID from me are very high. So masks, 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 hand sanitizer, soap and water. Soap and water is just as good as hand sanitizer, provided that it's done all the time. And social distancing, very difficult, as the Prime Minister has said, extremely difficult in our context here. We're, we're, we're a communal society, you know, we, we uh, as you know, and Grand Chief uh, Sir Michael died, we have how many thousands of people? all in a closed space, many of them not wearing masks, I doubt any of them are hand sanitizing. So, so this is a fact of life. But if we, if we set an example and we wear our masks, and we get our relatives to wear a mask, and we have soap and water, and we wash our hands regularly, and we try as far as possible, it's not going to be possible all the time, we try to keep our distance, and as the Prime Minister says, we, we don't need to go and visit friends on the other side of town, we, as far as possible, we stay where we are. So, so that, those are the, the main points I want to make. The vaccine is not compulsory. Is it advisable? Absolutely yes, because you're protecting yourself, you're protecting your family, and you're protecting your community. Are there side effects? Yes, there are side effects, but they're generally mild. Are there any serious complications? Yes, there are, but they're incredibly rare. Something like one in every million doses. Those are the figures that are coming out. Something like one severe effect in every million doses. You just think about, about that, don't you? But then if we don't give the vaccine, and then we end up, as Prof. Kavar said, with people dying in the ward at the age of 38, that's tragic, isn't it? Um, so, and, and, and particularly in Port Moresby, we have a population at very high risk because of lifestyle diseases. It, 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 it's a real issue. So